Hi, in this video, I'm going to discuss what is an algorithm and show you some examples later on this video. What is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of well-defined instructions in sequence to solve a problem. We use algorithms to solve computational problems and gives us an output as a result of the entire process. A well-defined instructions in sequence, so meaning to say we're going to divide the solution in step-by-step -step procedure and once we follow those steps, we'll end up with the solution to our problem. Algorithm can be done in many ways. This, this is a double meaning uh, sentence. So the first meaning is that uh, the algorithm can be represented in different ways, like a bulleted list or a step-by-step -step procedure. So those are the uh, representation of algorithm. And then the second meaning of this uh, sentence is a solution can be represented in many different ways, or we can solve a problem in different ways. And that's what the algorithm does for us to make a solution to a certain problem. And here are the qualities of a good algorithm. The first one, input and output should be defined precisely. Each step-by-step -step procedure in algorithm should be clear and unambiguous. Algorithm should be most effective among many different ways to solve a problem. And algorithm should have computer code. So instead, the algorithm should be written in such a way that it can be used similar to programming languages. So let's start with the first algorithm. So with this problem, write an algorithm that gets the sum of 5 and 10 and display it as a result. Here's the step-by-step -step procedure in order for us to solve the problem. So the step 1 is to start. Step 2, get the sum of 5 and 10 using addition operation and assign it to result. So result here is a variable. So our result is equal to 5 plus 10. So I'm going to say the value of result now would be the sum of 5 and 10. And then step 3, display the result. So whatever the value of res the result will be displayed on our algorithm. And then the step 4 is stop. Okay. So now, in step 1, it serves as a guide on where should the reader start the algorithm. So that's why in our step 1, it is the start. In step 2, since in our problem specification, it says here it gets the sum of 5 and 10. So that's why in step 2, here in this algorithm, uh, it states the main process to be taken and how to do it. So get the sum of 5 and 10 using addition operation and assign it to the result. Okay. So result here is a variable. We assign the sum of 5 and 10 to our result. Now the result contains the result for 5 plus 10. And then step 3 shows the result as output of the process since it states in the problem that the sum should be displayed. So as it says here, display it as result. So that's why the variable name for the sum of 5 plus 10 is result. And then step four, of course, is the stop. So step four is where the algorithm stops. So that's it for our first algorithm. So this is the answer for our solution. So this is an example of an algorithm. Okay. So next. Note, in every step in the algorithm may have different number of instructions depending on the problem specification and requirement. Okay, so some algorithm may take seven to eight steps to finish. So in our first example, the algorithm can only add five and ten. It's our problem specification. But what if the problem requires an algorithm that can accept uh, input instead of just five and ten? So for that, let us have our second example for our algorithm. So here's the problem specification. Write an algorithm that gets the sum of two numbers as input from the user and display the result. So again, step one is the start. Step two, we have to declare variables num1 and num2 that will hold the user inputs respectively. And then the result that will contain the sum of this variable. So in mathematics, I think in high school, um, they use the word let let's say let x is equals to 5 and then let y is equals to let's say 10 
Okay, so x and y are variables. So we declare variables in uh, algorithm. In computer programming or in any program languages, we always uh, declare variables that will hold the user input. Okay, so declare variables num1, num2 that will hold the user input respectively and result that will contain the sum of these variables. Okay, so variables are just containers of the value. Next, step three. Assume numbers were entered by the user and sign it to num1 and num2. So let's say num1 is equal to 10 and then num2 is equal to 12. Okay? And then step 4, get the sum of these variables and assign it to result. Okay? So result is equal to num1. So what is the value of num1? It's 10 plus num2 which is 12. So 10 plus 12 is equal to the result. Okay? And then, of course, display the result. Just like uh, in our problem specification, it says here that we have to display the result. Okay? And then, step six, of course, is to stop the algorithm. So, meaning to say, there's no more step to follow. Okay. So, let num1, it says here, like, um, in a simple uh, explanation, so let num1, num2 as user input and result as the sum. Okay, so that's step two. Then let's say num1, so let's assign 12 to num1, then num2 is equal to 4, so assume a numbers were entered. And then result, num1 plus num2, so that's uh, step four. The result is equal to 12 plus 4. And then step five, display the result, which is 16. Okay? So from here, we just need to use our... Um, uh, algorithm from the previous example and add some steps that would assign the user's input t to the variable. Okay, so variables are just container again of a value and it may or may not change depending on the algorithm's implementation. Okay, so and this is how the uh, programmer communicates. So our idea to other people. So through algorithm we can express how a program works. So most companies and business organizations use algorithm to instruct their newly hired employee on how to do things or how to find the place they were looking. Okay, so here are some uh, uh, other examples. So write an algorithm to find out if the given number is even or odd. So that's a good example. So let's try that. Okay, so step one again is the start. And then step two, declare variable num that will hold the number. So we only declare one variable because we just uh, need to find if the given number, so meaning to say we, we don't have to compare anything or to add numbers or two numbers, three numbers. We just need to uh, def uh, try to check if a number is even or add. Okay? And then let's assume a value for num. So let's say 13. And then step 4, um, divide num by 2 and check if the result is a whole number. Okay, so if num divided by 2 is a whole number, then the uh, num is even, otherwise it's an odd number. Okay, and then stop. So let's say uh, 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. So that's not a whole number, it's a fraction. So I'm to say 13 is an odd number. Okay, so another way of solving this or representing it is to divide the uh, num by 2 and then if the remainder is 0 then of course it's an even number otherwise it's an odd number so just like what I've said in the uh, earlier slides that algorithms can be represented in many ways so I mean to say there's are many other ways in order for us to solve this problem okay other examples so another one is write an algorithm to find and display the largest among the three different numbers entered by the user okay so step one is start step two declare num variables num1 num2 and num3 that will hold the user's input and then assume a value for num1 num2 and num3 let's say num1 is 5 num2 is 7 and then num3 is equals to 9 okay so 5 7 9 and then step four compare the value of num1 if it's greater than num2 and num3 if yes display num1 is the largest compare the value of num2 if it's greater than num1 and num3 if yes display num2 is the largest 
compare if the number of or the value of num3 is greater than num2 and num1 and then if yes display num3 is the largest okay so and then step 7 is stop so in our algorithm we will find out that in step 6 num3 is greater than num2 and num1 okay so well that looks fine but inefficient so why is that suppose we get these values num1 is equal to 100 num2 is 2 and then num3 is 5 okay so we just one look we know that num1 is the largest among the three numbers okay so in step 4 of the algorithm which is this one compare the value of num1 if it's greater than num2 and num3 so if yes display num1 is the largest okay the algorithm should stop already because we have the answer which is num1 is the largest right but after step 4 the algorithm will continue to step 5 and 6 until it reaches step 7 so I mean to say we waste more steps though we know already the answer for this whole algorithm okay so to solve this problem we can rewrite the algorithm to proceed to a certain step so just like this step 4 compare the value of num1 if it's greater than num2 and num3 so if yes display num1 is the largest then proceed to step 7 so I mean to say after checking if this is um, if num1 is greater than num2 and num3 so I mean to say uh, we will display num1 is the largest and then we go to step 7 so we don't have to uh, go to step 5 and step 6 and waste more time in comparing num2 to num1 and num3 and num3 to num2 and num1 okay so can we improve this algorithm to make it more efficient yes in writing algorithms we should always aim for an extra mile okay so i hope that you get the idea on this uh, problem so here's the solution so step one is to start step two declare variables num1 num2 and num3 that will hold the user's input step three assume a value for num1 num2 and num3 and then compare the value of num1 if it's greater than num2 if yes proceed to step five otherwise proceed to step 6 then compare the value of num1 if it's greater than to num3 if yes com uh, display num1 is the largest otherwise display num3 is the largest and then proceed to step 7 and then step 6 compare the value of num3 if it's greater than num2 if yes display num3 is the largest otherwise display num2 is the largest and then step 7 stop so that's the solution for this um, algorithm okay so that's all for now thank you for watching and see you on our next video